Mic check, mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check, mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check, mic check.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to DeSanto Field here on the campus of Case Western Reserve University. And we are excited to bring you a great game today. The number six ranked Case Western Reserve University Spartans taking on the number three Washington University Bears. Coming over from St. Louis. Again, a great matchup today. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarzucci. Excited for this one. We saw the Spartans team in action just a couple days ago on Friday night. And they played Chicago, the University of Chicago, to a 1-1 draw. Chicago's over taking on Carnegie Mellon right now. And that's who the Bears played on Friday night at the same time. And that was a scoreless draw. It was the first draw all season for the Wash U Bears. They're 12-0-1 on the year. Perfect 7-0 at home, 4-0-1 on the road. And the big storyline for the Bears this season, particularly their goalkeeper, Sidney Connor, but as a team, have not given up a goal all year. They've also scored as many as eight in a single game. They're a team that gets going quickly on both sides of the ball. Sydney Connor, who we mentioned, has played 11 games, has 27 saves. She's 9-0-1. Sophia Raudas has also played in a couple games and has continued this team's streak of an entire scoreless season. So the Spartans will try to be the first team to end that. A couple of years ago when Wash U was in town, similar story, they were ranked in the top five in the country. The Spartans were ranked lower at the time. That was back in 2021. And the Spartans were victorious one to nothing. And then last season when these teams faced off on Francis Olympic Field, the Spartans came out with a two to one victory. It's been a great series in the past couple of years between these two teams and we expect more of that today. We get started, the Spartans with the ball first. Carolyn Catorres starting off in the nine spot. She kicks us off. A lot of new faces in this lineup for both teams compared to the matchups we've had in the past couple of years. Mackenzie Mueller for the Spartans tries to work it forward and now they go outside to Molly Shama, one of those newer faces. She's in the starting lineup for the third consecutive game. Past two games has scored a goal in the absence of Helena Van Bibber. Shama scored in the first half of Friday night's game off a corner kick that sort of bounced around in the box. It was a loose ball off a rebound shot from Maggie Farah, and Shama found the end of it. So Wash U will play with the ball in their back line. Here's Emma Riley McGahan. She'll be in that left outside spot. She'll work it into the midfield. Sophie Viskovich, a first year from Oakton, Virginia, in the starting lineup alongside her sister. And here's a push forward from Wash U. And the ball knocked out of play by Anaya Hartzler. Anna Viskovich is a senior midfielder. And has been part of this lineup the last couple seasons. The key player to watch is Galen Clayton who leads this team with six goals and four assists on the year. The corner kick comes in about the middle of the box, a header, and it's saved by Storty. Off the rebound shot, it's knocked out of play. That's Maggie Storty, a good opportunity to talk about her. She was a first team UAA all selection a year ago and holds a load of Spartan records, including victories, shutouts, and the sort. And Storty just made a huge play to start things off for the Spartans and keep this game scoreless here early. It was a quick attack by the Bears and an early corner kick. It's a Bears team that scored 18 goals in first halves this season. They'll start on the offensive again and Maya Healy on the defensive end this time working against Ella Kaleno. And Kaleno's another top scorer for the Bears. Four goals, four assists. And Grace Ellert will be the other player to watch. Five goals for her. But 
they're working against a tough Spartan defense, a Spartan defense that's actually statistically better than they were a year ago. Last year they gave up, on average, .68 goals per game. This year that number is down to .46, and they haven't given up more than a single goal in any individual game. They've given up six goals all year, but they have given up one each of the past three games. All of those conference matchups against Emory, Rochester, and Chicago. The Spartans have back-to-back 1-1 -one -one draws, and they'll try to move it forward here early with CeCe DePino and a couple defenders around her, including Jessica Graven, a seasoned player, a senior from Carmel, Indiana. And Graven will be a tough challenge for the Spartans offense, an offense that hasn't gotten going the way they have the previous couple seasons, but it's Wash U on the other side. Ball going into the box looking for Clayton, but the Spartan defense recovers well. Here's Shama going into Katuras on the counterattack and a lot of space for Alexis Sassauer who scored her first career goal a couple games ago against NYU. She'll work this one outside in tough defense on her from McGahan. She'll have to retreat. Katie Richels coming up to join her. And now Clayton joining the defensive effort. The cross comes in, it's not strong, and cleared out for the moment by the Bears, going back to Maya Healy for the Spartans. Now Rischel trying to find Sassauer again. And the whistle blows and she was offsides. I mentioned Sydney Connor. For Wash U back in 2021, she was the sophomore rookie of the year in the UAA conference. What that meant was since there was no 2020 season, all the sophomores were technically still rookies playing their first UAA season. So Sydney Connor was recognized for that. She was a UAA second team selection last year. We mentioned on the other side, Storty was the first, and Jamie Goldfarb takes a tough tackle on the play from Ella Kaleno and the Bears. We'll work the ball forward off of it. The Spartans wanted a call, and Clayton's shot is deflected by Hartzler. Works backwards to Anna Viskovich. And then outside, right back in, Clayton, Kaleno. And the Spartan defense holds strong again. And they can look to counter again quickly. The Wash U defense has been doing a good job so far getting back. Allie Hackett has been a, one of those players in that back line, that left center back spot for the Wash U Bears. And this is a team in Wash U with a storied history with their head coach Jim Conlon. Three national championship appearances including their first and only victory in 2016. They also made it back in 09 and 2015. In his 13 seasons they've made the NCAA tournament every single year and they won the UAA six straight seasons from 15 to 19 and then in 21. But that streak ended last year when the Spartans clinched their first ever UAA title after a one nothing victory right here over Carnegie Mellon as the cross comes in and it's poked away by Anaya Hartzler once again. Hartzler has had a busy night, or a busy morning I should say, on the defensive end already. Knocked out of play and we'll have a throw in coming from the near side. McGay hand to Clayton. She'll take it herself. She's got some green and she's got a couple runners, but she'll try to work it past Goldfarb who tips her ball and now gets it back to her. An open shot, Viskovich and Hartzler once again on top of it, helping out her goalkeeper, Storty. That ball tiptoeing that line, it's gonna be out of play and we'll have a throw in. For Wash U, we mentioned 13 straight seasons. They've been in the tournament every year since 2006. Last year, they were defeated in the quarterfinals in penalties against Messiah. They've actually lost their last three seasons, 2019, 2021, and 2022 seasons, in penalty kicks in the tournament. They were in the quarterfinals back in 2019, the round of 16 back in 2021, as they'll set up for another corner kick.
Anna Viskovic will have this one again. And it was a close chance for them on the last go around as Coach Conlon brings Sydney Connor up to talk to her around midfield. Corner comes in. Another header. This time the Spartans look to be on the end of that, and they'll clear it out. And I believe that was Sassauer who got it out of the box, but a throw in will stay in the attacking third for Wash U. So Wash U team that averages over three goals per game. Certainly one of the toughest offenses, not only in the conference, but in the country. And this is a conference that's loaded with offense. Wash U actually third in UAA scoring against a Spartan team that ranks just seventh. Inside to Clayton. And then to Graven. Defensively, CeCe DePino tries to get it off of her. And they nearly countered. Wash U did well to get back with Hackett. And now a foul is going to be called against Carolyn Catorres. And she didn't agree with it. But Wash U will have a free kick coming right down the middle of the field. And Sarah Neltner thought about taking it quickly. She's a senior from Pickerington, Ohio. She'll go outside to Hackett. And now they'll work it forward in the direction of Coleno. And the Spartans get it back. Katorez trying to hit a running Shama forward, but the defense was tough that time and a throw in on the far side. The Spartans a year ago were loaded with offensive weapons, including two All-Americans, Cameron Hartman, and then from the year before, Annika Washburn, who was back-to-back -back UAA Offensive Player of the Year. But this year, they're still looking to find who's going to be that top goal scorer they were averaging over three goals a game last year. This year, they're averaging under two and actually closer to one and a half. As the throw-in stays on the near side with Coleno and then back to McGahan, looking in the direction of Grace Ellert. And as Mackenzie Mueller is taken down, no call once again. And now a late whistle does come in. A lot of aggressive play in this UAA conference, and we saw some of that Friday night. Jamie Goldfarb was involved in a lot of tackles, as she typically is on the defensive end. And it seems like the colder it gets, the closer we get to postseason. These teams pick up the intensity every year. And as we mentioned earlier, this has been a great matchup the past couple seasons. Spartans trying to work it through that tough Wash U defense. It's a Wash U defense that coming into this game has only allowed opponents to earn 65 shots on the year. The Spartans will have a throw in with Katie Rischel. Got a couple teammates around her. She'll hit Sassauer and find some room inside. Has some teammates. She was trying to slip it through to Mackenzie Mueller and couldn't quite get it there. And Mueller scored her second goal of the season a couple games ago against Emery, part of a 3-1 to one victory. Mueller, Healy, and Jamie Goldfarb all got themselves on the board in that one. And then the last two games, it's been Molly Shama who scored the Spartans' last two goals. A long shot comes off here, and it slips by Storty. And Wash U is on the board first. So coming off a game where they were unable to score against Carnegie Mellon, that's the response from Wash U. A long shot from Sophie Viskovic. The first year midfielder. And she's got her second goal of the season. And the Spartans playing from behind. 
had to do this a couple games ago against Rochester. They were down 1-0 in the first half after an early goal. Didn't respond until the second half. And again, ended that one with a 1-1 draw. And can't talk enough about that Wash U defense, though. Despite how great they are scoring, they've gone their entire season without allowing a single goal. So it goes without saying that it's an uphill battle for the Spartans from here on out. But it's a Wash U team that doesn't let up. Again, mentioned they score three goals a game. In UAA competition, so far in four matches, they've scored six goals, including two against Emory and four against Brandeis. Actually, seven. They scored one more against NYU. And they continue to push forward here. Spartans finally get the ball out and get it back. It's a Spartan team that doesn't typically get rattled when they're in these types of situations, just playing from behind. Really a goal that felt like it came out of nowhere, not a typical position that you would see a shot from as DePino tries to slip by a couple defenders. But strong defense there from Neltner. It was a ball that slipped just through the hands of Maggie Storty as she was jumping on top of it. And Galen Clayton working the left side now for the Bears. Working with Kaleno, trying to get by a couple defenders. She's by Healy and across on the ground. Storty was diving for it. Hartzler went to poke it away, and now the shot at the end of that is high and wide. So five shots already for Wash U. We mentioned how good they are offensively, but defensively they haven't given up a shot to the Spartans yet. Again, mentioned Wash U is only allowed 65 shots to come off all season. Clayton on the left side, defense from Katie Rischel. And you talk about how good the Spartans have been this season defensively, despite losing three of their four starters in the back line. But again, they have struggled in recent games compared to earlier in the season and have now allowed a goal in the last four matches. Before that, they went four straight shutouts. As the corner comes in, far post, Hackett fighting for it. Goldfarb was there for the Spartans. It's still in the box. Hackett's running back to get to it, so Rujas will let it go. And that'll make it a goal kick. And two first-year starters in that back line. Maya Healy continues to remain in the starting lineup after she came in against Misericordia earlier in the season and scored her first goal of her young career. That was the number five team in the country at the time. And Katza Rujas has started every game so far this season. And it's the Bears offensively again. Graven works it forward now outside to McGahan, Clayton, a give and go action, and Katie Rischel saw it coming. Once again outside to Ellert this time, she'll try to get a cross off, Maya Healy is there on the end of it, and she'll boot it away. The Spartans trying to counter but can't get their numbers up in time, and it's cleared out now by the Bears. Going outside Clayton, Rischel running back defensively. The cross comes in. Anaya Hartzler gets on the end of it and helps the Spartans clear out that attack. But they're having trouble setting up counters. Wash U so good defensively swarming 
and preventing this Spartan team from getting up in time. Here's Katorez trying to slow the pace down against Hackett. Now Sassauer launches one forward and can't find her teammate DePino. Trapped on the near side. It's going to be out of play against the Spartans. The Spartans have had back-to-back -back UAA coaching staffs of the year, including Abby Richter a year ago. In her first season with the Spartans, the year before, the team was led by Jen Simonetti, who took the Spartans to an NCAA Sweet 16 run, which at the time was the farthest they'd ever gone in school history. And then last year, of course, surpassed that mark with a national championship run where they were defeated by Johns Hopkins. The Spartans under Abby Richter have yet to lose a regular season match and sit at 10-0-3 on the season, 2-0-2 in conference play as Emma Riley McGahan's getting cleaned up on the sidelines. They're going to get a substitute in for her, and Nicole Schmidt will come in, a junior from Lincolnshire, Illinois. Schmidt's no stranger to the field. She's played in 11 games this season. She's on the ball. Comes in and nearly loses it in her direction as Katorez was bearing down on her. Ball popped up. A couple Spartans in the area fighting with Viskovich. That's Sophie, the goal scorer for the Bears. Ball's tipped, it'll be out of play. Off of a bear, and the Spartans will have a throw in this time on the far side. Just under 20 minutes into this one, and we already have an early goal from Wash U that came in the 13th minute of play from Sophie Viskovich, a long shot that went through the hands of Maggie Storty. So Rujas will launch it into the box. The Spartans still have not been able to get a shot off. It's uncharacteristic for them. As Katie Rischel tries to get some offense going, she'll slip it outside to DePino if she can track it down and just can't quite keep it in on that baseline. Spartan team that's only scored 22 goals on the season and certainly not the number that they were hoping for again especially coming off their success the past two seasons we mentioned in 2022 they averaged over three goals a game back in 2021 they averaged about two and a half another shot for the Bears this one floats a little bit from Ellert, and Storty is cleanly all over this one. Boots it out in the direction of Shama, and we just haven't seen the ball being played a lot that side for the Spartans today. Wash U has tended to go towards the left side of their offense, but this time they're testing the right against Katsuruhas, and she'll poke the ball out of play for a corner kick. And Anna Viskovich will head over to take it once again. It'll be the fourth corner kick so far here in the first half as Emma Riley McGahan comes back into the lineup, taking off Schmidt. She'll go straight into that eight yard box. It's a line drive ball, Hartzler tips it off her head and then back in the direction of Hackett. Now Sassauer running underneath, intercepts that pass. Sprinting down the near sideline, looking for a teammate, and a great job by the Bears getting back. Viskovich 
stop that counterattack. Now DePino trying to run by a couple defenders. And this is a defense that is hard to run by. And you've seen it today. They've done a great job just getting back in numbers anytime the Spartans have tried to counterattack or set up a sort of fast break opportunity. It's a big part of the reason they've been so good defensively, but of course a great goalkeeping from Sydney Connor, as we've seen the past three seasons from her. This pass intercepted by the Spartans once again, Jamie Goldfarb. Now played back towards Kate Flynn. I haven't called her name yet tonight. She's a senior midfielder from Woodridge, Illinois. Tonight, meaning this morning, it's still before noon. And we've had a couple other UAA games in action around the country today as well. Brandeis taking on Rochester, NYU taking on Emory, and of course Chicago taking on Carnegie Mellon. Currently Rochester and Brandeis knotted up at zero in the 24th minute. NYU has scored on Emory, 1-0 in the 35th over in Atlanta, and then in Pittsburgh as the Spartans start their attack, it's scoreless in the 24th between Chicago and Carnegie Mellon. But that attack ends just as quickly as the Bears get the ball back. Flynn running up the middle of the field, working against Goldfarb, looking for Viscovich, and she'll retreat to the far side to Sarah Neltner. coming from Saruhas. Washu currently sits at the top of the UAA standings. 3-0-1 in conference play. We mentioned had that one draw against Carnegie Mellon in their last outing. The only time this season they have not won. Both these teams undefeated. And Carnegie Mellon, along with Rochester, also undefeated overall. Rochester sits at 9-0-5. They drew against this Spartan team last weekend. And then Carnegie Mellon at 11-0-3. WashU still has to play Rochester. And that'll be a week from today. And they'll finish their season in their rivalry matchup against the University of Chicago. And both of those will be back over on Francis Olympic Field. Bears will try to work it forward. They'll keep it on this side with Kate Flynn working against Katie Rischel. And who's that going to be out on? Flynn looked like she had the last touch on it. So the Spartans with DePino trying to find just anything that can slip by this Wash U defense, but they're so alert and have been ready for pretty much anything the Spartans have thrown at them today. Healy, a good tackle, a good strong tackle. And the ball will be rolled out of play. Merrill McKenna and Casey Carl will enter the game. Carl is a sophomore midfielder from Denver, and McKenna, a junior midfielder from Brookfield, Connecticut. This one goes outside in the direction of McKenna, and it'll be knocked out of play. So Kate Flynn and Jessica Graven off the field for the moment. couple Spartans will prepare to enter the game as well as the Spartans will have a free kick Nicole Schmidt is also back there on the sideline getting ready to re-enter this one this 
Spartans get it out to Shama. It's been a while since she's been on the ball in this one. And they want to get her going again, has scored in the past two matches. They've got a lot of players, the Spartans do, with a lot of speed on the outside and just haven't gotten a chance to show that off so far. And they'll sub one of them in right now. Andrea Silva will check into the match along with Sid Schenk and Maggie Farah. And for Wash U, Sarah Neltner is off. And again, Nicole Schmidt, who was just in moments ago, is back in the game. Here's Farah, Maggie Farah, who had an assist in the last match. She's a sophomore from Portland, Oregon. As the ball works inside to Sid Shank, the Spartans trying to get an attack set up, and Hackett is there defensively to knock it away. Allie Hackett has had a nice afternoon so far. She's a graduate defender from Charlotte, North Carolina. Sassauer has now moved up to the left side as Molly Shama is out of the game. Carolyn Couturas and Cece DePino also off. And Maggie Farah is up top for the Spartans now. Trying to see if they can get an attack going. And Sid Shank, she was grabbed from behind and she'll draw the whistle. The officials were thinking about playing an advantage and a yellow card is out. And that's gonna go against Casey Carl. And it's a free kick in a good position now for the Spartans. Anaya Hartzler is gonna set up to take it. So the fresh legs for the Spartans may be making an impact with Sid Shank. So it's Goldfarb, Shank, Mueller, the closest ones to it in the box. Sassauer and Farah also in the area, and Andrea Silva on the other side for the Spartans. As Hartzler will set up for a free kick. It would be a long shot from here, about say maybe 30 yards or so. Hartzler will go for it herself. It curls out and Sydney Connor diving, didn't have to make the save. It was wide to the left. And it's officially the first shot of the day for the Spartans coming off that free kick from Anaya Hartzler. Hartzler also scored this team's one and only goal in the national championship last December. But has since moved back into the defensive line, into that left center back spot where she's played all season, but also has this program's career assist record, she said a couple games ago. Of course, most of those coming when she was in that sort of attacking midfield role the past couple years. Bears go outside with Kaleno. And then a cross comes in long that Maggie Storty is able to retrieve. She'll boot this out to the near side. Schmidt comes in front for the Bears. And now Rischel clears it out, getting it to Maggie Farah. And her pass just a little bit too high for Andrea Silva. Kalena working against Healy. This time Healy is on top of it and a nice job by Andrea Silva to wall off Merrill McKenna. The Spartans start their attack with Shank in the middle. 
and she was trying to go outside to Sassauer, but the defense was there once again. The last 15 minutes to play in this first half, and the Spartans just have not had really any opportunities from the field. Their best look at goal was the shot off the free kick from Anaya Hartzler, but even that, a very long shot. Some room to work. Middle of the field, Viskovic. She's got help outside of her, and her pass is stepped in front of by Rischel. Bears get it back quickly with Schmidt. Outside McKenna. Two defenders now on her. Rischel and Silva poke the ball away. And now Rischel clears it out looking for Sid Shank. Can't quite get there. Every time the Spartans have gotten on the ball, the Bears seem to get it back just as quickly. Can't collect it. Bears get it back for the moment. Now Mueller fighting for it. She takes a hit and she wanted a foul. Won't get it. And the ball will be out of play on her. Another substitution for Wash U. Sarah Giannotti is in the game. And she'll take out Galen Clayton. Nadi's got two goals and one assist on the season. Looking to add to that total with a 1-0 lead already for the Bears. Silva's taken down. And the Bears get the ball back. There's Giannotti working it forward. Kaleno, a lot of white shirts in the box. Spinning around. The shot from Viskovic. Anna can't get on the board that time. Maggie Storty was there. Bears get it once again, this time middle of the field. Mueller comes flying in, and a shot comes off. This time it bounces into Storty, who's on top of it. Storty's been busy today. With Washu already notching eight shots, including five of them on goal. Sliding Hartzler can't get to it. High shot! And nearly extending the lead. The Bears not even giving the Spartans an opportunity as Sassauer will come out. Julia Flynn enters the game. She's a sophomore forward from Columbus. And she'll try to get this Spartans attack sparked. Just one shot still for the Spartans off the free kick. Coming for a team that averages about eight shots in first halves this season. It's been all Wash U on the offensive end. Schmidt works this one forward, Giannotti Spartans step in front, but can't get an attack set up. Hackett is there, now all the way back to Connor, and she hasn't really seen much of the ball today. The ball's really only been on this side of the field a handful of times. As Flynn goes outside, and it's going to be out off of her. For a Wash U throw, and as we approach 10 minutes left to play in this first half, the Spartans with a win would pass Wash U for that number one spot in the conference. Wash U, of course, with a win, would remain and extend their lead. The Spartans in sole possession of second 
The Bears with 10 points, the Spartans with 8 on the year, and a couple more subs with Madison Foley and Madeline Auburn entering this one as the Bears have a corner kick. It looks like Giannotti will be over there to take it. Giannotti's ball curls in. It's a high ball. It's still loose in there. Hackett is the closest bear to it, and it's going to be knocked out of play for a throw-in. But we'll stay here for the Bears. Schmidt's throw-in. Played short. Now Silva coming down on her, and they want to say it's out of play, and it is. They do get the call. As the throw-in comes to Farah, it's also alumni weekend for the Spartans women's soccer team. They had a lot of alumni back yesterday to celebrate the team's UAA Conference Championship yesterday. They had their ring presentation ceremony. Also, all those former players just got a chance to see each other again. Last week was also homecoming, so some of those players back last weekend and then back once again for this team. It's a Spartan team that would have to take down Wash U to repeat as UAA champions. Goldfarb is tripped up that time and that's going to draw a foul. Again, last year was the Spartans' first ever UAA title, ending a streak of six straight Wash U UAA wi victories. Mueller slips by one defender, but can't get by Schmidt. And she's going to get called for the foul as Schmidt was sort of boxing her out away from the ball. It'll be a free kick from deep in Bear territory, and Schmidt will just play it back to Connor. On the ground in front to Hackett, and Schenk was sprinting forward and nearly got her off the ball. That one tips off of Silva. And Wash U getting ready to make another sub. Tyler Wilson will answer this one. A senior from Verona, Wisconsin. And for the Spartans, Abby Manessis in the game now for Sydney Schenk. Ginotti goes backwards to Schmidt. The Spartans still struggling to get their offense going. It's a team that scored from a variety of positions this year, a variety of players. Carolyn Katuras has three goals, and then numerous other players with two. It's the Bears working it forward with Foley. She'll look outside. Auburn is there, but Maya Healy will get there first and box her out. It'll go out for a goal kick. Storty plays it short to Hartzler, who has to slip by a defender. They'll try to set up the Spartan attack from here this time. Farah, one touch outside to Flynn. Can't get it there cleanly. Now Farah fighting for it herself. And it's out on the far side. Katsurujas with a throw in. We're under six minutes now to play in the first half. The Spartans trying to steal a goal before we head to the break. Against a Wash U defense that has yet to allow a goal all season. Rischel working it forward. The ball's tipped away from her. And now Healy will end any chance of a Wash U counterattack. Wash U team that's much improved from a season ago. We mentioned they made it to the quarterfinals in the NCAA tournament. They had actually defeated Carnegie Mellon the game before in Pittsburgh 2-1. to 
and then lost in penalties to Messiah. But they actually finished sixth in the conference. They were 11, 5, and 7 overall. And were just 2, 4, and 1 in conference play. A far surpassed those marks this year. It was a year when the Spartans were first, finished 6 0 and 1 in conference play, and were 21 and 1 overall by the end of the year. That one loss again in the national championship. And it's a Wash U team that's trying to get back to their UAA winning ways. Maggie Farah is going to be called for an offside. She didn't agree with that call, and the Spartan crowd certainly doesn't either. This one pushed forward to Foley. A long, high arcing shot, and that one's just a little bit too high. And over the top of the crossbar for a goal kick. Three more conference games for each of these teams including this one here today. So still a lot of chances to shake up those conference standings. Wash U still has to play against Rochester and Chicago. And Case Western Reserve still with matches against Brandeis and Carnegie Mellon. Spartans outside with Flynn. Trying to find a teammate now. She can go back to Farah, and the Bears get the ball away from her. The number two ranked Wash U Bears taking on the number six ranked Case Western Reserve University Spartans. The Bears coming off a scoreless draw against number three Carnegie Mellon. As one move, shot! Another goal for Wash U. This time it's Foley. And Madison Foley, the first year forward, extends the Bears' lead. Her fourth goal of the season. And it's the first time all season the Spartans have let up two goals. And they both come in the first half with 2.23 left to play before the break. huddle for the Spartans on their side of the field after that this is unfamiliar territory for the Spartans this season reminiscent of the last time they gave up two goals at home they were down two nothing against William Smith in the Elite Eight round last year in the NCAA tournament. And they came back to win that one four to two. And were sparked by two goals from Helena Van Bibber. But Helena has not played in the last couple of matches and is not expected to play here today as well. Last time the Spartans even gave up two goals was in that national championship. As Hartzler just tries to work it out of there. And will earn a foul call. The Spartans will try to answer quickly with just over a minute left in this first half. Goldfarb going forward off of Schmidt's head in the direction of Farah. And now Mueller trying to go outside to Silva. Silva fighting with Schmidt. And Schmidt's trying to let it go out of play. And it will for a Wash U throw in. 50 seconds now. Out 
Out of play on this side now. Spartans with a throw in. Good position for them. Silva will play it down to Rischel. She'll look inside. And the defense surrounding her. Auburn. Giannotti got back as well off of Hackett's head. And Manessas tried to get on the end of that. The Wash U defense was there first. Goldfarb sliding. Wash U looked like they were expecting a foul and didn't get the call. Now Hartzler pops it up. Flynn, Farah. And not in a good position for a shot there. Manessas tries to poke it forward. Hackett nearly lost the ball right on that 18-yard line at the edge of the box. As the countdown goes and the first half will end, a late goal from Madison Foley to add on to the early goal from Sophie Viskovich. And it's a 2-0 lead for Wash U, the number two ranked team in the country, trying to jeopardize the Spartans' undefeated season while remaining undefeated themselves. We'll be back for the second half here from DeSanto Field.
just about set for the second half of play in a nationally ranked matchup number six Case Western Reserve taking on number two Wash U. Sarzucci back for the second half of a 2-0 game that Wash U took control of early in the 13th minute a goal from Sophie Viscovich a long shot that sort of slipped off the hands of Maggie Storty and then in the 43rd minute just before the halftime break Madison Foley who checked into the game as a sub got herself on the board a rocket of a shot to the top left corner and the Bears will start off with the ball in the second half Anna Viscovich will work it to the Bears left side it's a Spartan team that only notched one shot in that first half compared to 11 from the Bears including six shots on goal and the one shot for the Spartans came off of a free kick from Anaya Hartzler as the Bears move it forward looking outside this time Viscovich goes inside that's Sophie Viscovich who scored that early goal and Maggie Storty is on top of it the Spartans really struggled to move the ball forward and the time of possession was dominated by the Bears who held it for about two-thirds of the time And when they did hold the ball, they were on the Spartan side of the field for 60% of that time. The Spartans, in the meantime, were only in possession around the middle of the field as a whistle will blow. And Katsa Ruhas thought she was going to be able to move the ball forward there. Instead, she's going to get called for a foul. So the Spartans back to their original starting lineup. Molly Shama back in the game. Carolyn Katora as Alexis Sassauer and CeCe DePino. The only difference is Abby Manessis is still in the game. She checked in later in that first half as Goldfarb with a strong tackle against Grace Ellert working the right side for Wash U now. And they'll have a throw in from a good spot here. Merrill McKenna sends it in and Manessis gets her head on it. Actually, that was Goldfarb over there. Throw in comes once again, Goldfarb. Now Manessis works it forward to Shama. And the Spartans trying to start a counterattack with Carolyn Katora as she's got help outside of her to Alexis Sassauer. And the ball is poked away by Reagan Cannon actually made a mistake Reagan Cannon wearing number six today so we initially called her Nicole Schmidt it's Cannon who was there in the first half and that's her on that left outside back spot cross comes in from Sassauer Mueller was the closest one to it for the Spartans but a load of Bears there instead including Sarah Neltner pass goes inside and Allie Hackett is there to knock it away, and she's had a great game so far. Had a great first half defensively, leading that back four. Now Neltner works it forward outside. Going for McKenna. She's got help from Eller, and now has help inside. The Spartan defense trying to recover. Ella Coleno is there for the Bears, but the Spartans are on top of it this time. It's the first time they've given up two goals all season, and they haven't trailed by two since that NCAA tournament game against William Smith right here on a snowy morning. And they came back with four goals in the second half to defeat William Smith, and head off to the final four. Knocked out of play by Shama. And we mentioned it in the first half, but Molly Shama has scored in each of the last two games. You could expect 
her to be involved with this offense today as well, but WashU has done a really nice job taking her away. Right now it's Merrill McKenna and Sarah Neltner on that side of the field. We just haven't seen the Spartans been able to work the ball forward just in general a whole lot, but especially on that side of the field as Alexis Sassauer will get called for the foul. Cannon takes the free kick and Neltner will boot it to the far sideline. It'll go out of play. As for the Spartans, it's a team that hasn't failed to score all season and actually has been a couple of years since the Spartans were shut out in a game as WashU continues to work forward on the offensive with a high shot. The last time the Spartans didn't score was in 2019 in their NCAA tournament game against the College of Worcester. It was a 0-0 draw that the Spartans would actually fall in penalties. And then after that, just one more time in 2021, they had a 0-0 tie on the road against Rochester. And the last time they were shut out at home was a 2-0 loss against Emory back in 2019. They'll have a throw in on the far side. So they've been successful in both conference and non-conference play. They also have a streak going for a couple of years of not losing in any non-conference games. Of course that Worcester game, technically a draw. As Manessis pokes this one forward, trying to start the attack from the outside. Sassauer working against Cannon. And Cannon's going to knock it out of play. Sassauer a little bit slow to get up as they have a throw in on the far side. Katie Rischel is up to take it. And our official checking to make sure Sassauer is good to go. As the throw-in comes to Katurez, and the Bears are there defensively again. Maya Healy trying to boot it forward, and it's too far for Sassauer. The Spartans... Women's soccer alums were also honored at halftime. We mentioned it was alumni weekend as many of last year's UAA champions came back and were honored with their rings yesterday. And they received a quick announcement and a round of applause at halftime while Coach Abby Richter talked to her team on the sideline trying to get them going in a game where they trail 2-0. And as a free kick comes for the Bears. Again, a Spartan team that has struggled to score this season compared to the marks that they were hitting last year, averaging well under two goals a game this year against a Wash U team that's not allowed a single goal all year. Rischel defensively gets the ball away and it's taken back by Coleno. Working it now down to the near side a little bit too far for McKenna, and it'll go out of play. Shama will drop it off for Tarujas. Throw-in goes in Molly's direction, and McKenna takes it away. Played forward quickly by the Bears. A 
Bears team that's looking to cement themselves in that number one spot in the UAA as the cross is knocked away by Goldfarb and now popped up in the direction of that penalty spot and a whistle will blow and the Spartans will have a free kick. About 10 minutes into this second half, not a whole lot of action so far. We've had a couple shots from the Bears, including one on target. Storty will boot it down to about midfield where CeCe DePino waits for it. Good defense from the Bears, wins them the ball back. That's what we've seen all day from them so far. Back row, Healy. Ellert steps in front of it, trying to chase it down. Now Healy joining that race, and she'll poke it out of play. It'll be a corner kick for Wash U. They had five of those in the first half. And actually, if you look at Wash U statistically, it's a team that gets better on the offensive end in the second half. They have 24 second half goals compared to including today 20 in the first half. They've also got more shots and more corners in second halves of games this year. This one is punched away by Storty. Cannon running over to get to it. Now McKenna trying to swirl it back into the box. And it's going to be poked out of play for a throw in. It'll stay in the attacking third for the Bears. It's also a Bears team with more saves in the second half. And they also commit less fouls. As the cross comes in, this one's going to be high. They were looking on the far side. But Maggie Storty is the one to collect it. Ella Coleno. Her pass a little bit too long, and it's going to be knocked out of play by Katie Rischel. Washu continues to push forward. Kaleno looking for a cross and can't get it off cleanly. Maya Healy stepped in front of it that time. Now it's Cannon on the far side. She's got Graven, who's back in the game now here in the second half. That one's going to be out on Wash U. This will give the Spartans a chance to move forward. They'll go quickly with it. Sassauer, that ball's knocked away from her, rolls along that far side line for another throw in. Couple subs coming in for the Bears now. Emma Riley McGahan will re enter the game along with Kate Flynn. They were both in the starting lineup. Casey Carl checks back in along with Galen Clayton. Clayton, we mentioned, of course, earlier, is the leading scorer for this Bears team heading into this matchup. She had six goals and four assists entering today. Casey Carl also had a yellow card in that first half very early on and didn't seem to affect the way she was playing it was on a fast break opportunity for the Spartans where Sid Schenk was running down the middle of the field and Carl grabbed her from the back as Sidney Connor takes the goal kick and Connor just hasn't had a lot of work so far today. Has 27 saves on the year. Has not had to make one today as the only shot for the Spartans was off target. As they're fighting for the ball, Katura has nearly got it back. Goldfarb was the one who kick-started that defensive effort. Now Katura is once again racing back for it. This time gets to it, looking for DePino on her left. It's Viscovich who does a nice job getting it back for the Bears. Now Healy keeps it away from an attack. Fight for it. Anna Viscovich along with Mackenzie Mueller. And Mueller ends up corralling it at the end of all of that. It's a Rujas. The other difference between this Spartans team and last year's is there's a lot of youth on the field in the starting lineup for the Spartans. Last couple of years they've had a good deal of experience including some fifth year players last year and certainly a lot of seniors. Again, have a couple of those this year, but 
in the starting lineup as that one's going to be called out of play. Spartans didn't agree with that as Shama was running down the left side, but the Spartans with a lot of first years and sophomores in this starting lineup, including Shama we mentioned in the lineup in the absence of Helena Van Biber, who had previously started every match at that left wing spot. We mentioned the two starters on the back line, Jamie Goldfarb at that midfield spot. She's in on that left center back spot right now with Noah Nia Hartzler on the field. But has played primarily where Abigail Manessis is playing right now. And of course, Mackenzie Mueller and Cece DePino, some young players, Alexis Sassauer, a sophomore as well. But the team so far this season still remains undefeated despite all of that. They come into this one ranked number six in the country. They're 10 0 and 3, coming off two straight draws, both by a score of 1 to 1 against number 12 Rochester and then the University of Chicago. They've got a tougher task here against the number two ranked team in the country and they trail 2-0 as the Bears try to work it through to Kaleno. Got two defenders on her and Katie Rischel will have a throw in for the Spartans. Keep it on that far side, and they're slowly advancing down the field. We're going to have a couple subs for the Spartans before we continue. Sid Shank and Andrea Silva will re-enter the game, so CeCe DePino and Molly Shama are off, and the Bears have done a nice job containing Shama. He's had a nice last couple of games. Just hasn't got a whole lot of runs and opportunities outside. Typically, they like to work it out to her and cross the ball in from there, from the left side. Shama does a great job of running by defenders and just hasn't been able to tonight, or today rather. With the speed of this Wash U defense, it's been primarily Sarah Neltner on that side. Kate Flynn is there right now, along with Emma Riley McGahan. On the ball is Abby Manessis, and she'll drop it forward for Flynn. Now to Rujas. The Bears get back quickly, and they'll win the ball back. That was Grace Ellert. Spartans starting to put a little bit more pressure on as Sassauer has moved back down to the left side, chasing the ball down. The best opportunity for the Spartans still was earlier. We mentioned that yellow card from Casey Carl off that foul. Anaya Hartzler took a shot on the free kick, and it's still the only shot the Spartans have had all day. Now it's the Bears in the box. A cross comes off, and it's too far for Galen Clayton. The Bears get back on the ball quickly. Cannon, she's got Clayton, she's got Kaleno. It goes too far and gets to Jamie Goldfarb instead. Now Silva clears it away. Katorez is up top, but two Wash U defenders are there. Now back to Cannon outside. Silva playing some defense. Thirteen shots now on the day. Seven of them on goal for Wash U, and two of them found their way in. Over at Rochester in the 64th minute, still scoreless between Rochester and Brandeis. And down in Atlanta, we've got a higher scoring contest there. 42nd minute, it's 2-1 NYU on top of Emory. And then over in Pittsburgh, Chicago and Carnegie Mellon. Still scoreless. That one in the 64th minute. Bears 
working it forward. Viskovich going for Clayton. It looked like that ball was just a little bit behind her. Actually hit her on the back. That allows the Spartans to clear it away, but Kaleno's got it back for the Bears. Slipping it through, and Maya Healy was there defensively. Ball popped in in the direction of Viskovich, and she was offsides either way, but Maggie Storty got to the ball before she could. So 25 minutes left for the Spartans trying to equalize. They're down 2-0 to Wash U. A team that's not given up a goal all year. The Spartans trying to be the team to change that. And Sarujas is going to get called for the foul on that tackle. Spartans have been great at home, and the last time they were defeated here at DeSanto Field was back in the NCAA tournament in November of 2021. As WashU goes outside to Flynn, and it's cleared out by Mackenzie Mueller. In that game, it was a 2 1 victory for the University of Chicago over Case Western Reserve University, and that game winning goal came in the 84th minute off of a free kick. A little bit different story here now as the Spartans trail by two. Sassauer and Mueller trying to get the ball off of Grace Ellard, but she split them nicely as Maggie Farah is getting ready to substitute into the game. The Bears go down to Flynn. Working by Saruhas, and now inside, Goldfarb is there defensively, and she'll knock it well out into the stands. Flynn will cross it in. Storty is there. Once again, get it back quickly. Sophie Viskovich going forward. She's got it back. She'll take a long shot. This one's going to be wide. Wide right that time. So subs for the Spartans. Maggie Farah is in for Carolyn Katuras. And Molly Shama comes back in for Alexis Sassauer. This one's knocked out of play by Healy as Wash U is starting up their attack once again with Ellert. Again, it's a Wash U team that averages over three goals a game. And is very good at capitalizing on opportunities. And they're coming off of a scoreless draw against Carnegie Mellon. Mellon, the number three ranked team in the country. So it was very interesting to see how this Wash U team would respond that was the first game they hadn't won all season. And they came out swinging here in Cleveland. They'll cross this one in. Storty's on top of it once again. And the Bears seemingly in the second half have dominated time of possession even more. We mentioned earlier in the first half they held the ball for about two-thirds of the time, 66%. But so far in the second half, seems like even more than that. Kate Flynn taking it inside herself. Now Mackenzie Mueller retreating defensively. Goldfarb gets the ball off of her. Now Farah. The Spartans trying to go quickly, and Allie Hackett is there on the defensive end. Looks like Coach Richter wanted a foul called against the Bears. Won't get it. And a load of subs coming in, including Madison Foley. The first year forward who scored the second goal of the day for the Bears. Spartans trying to work it forward to Farah. 
on the pass from Katsaruhas, and it's tipped out of play. Natsaruhas has a throw in for Farah off her head. A couple defenders already there. McGahan getting involved in that play. And outside, we'll see who it's out on. And they're going to call it out against the Spartans. Andrea Silva may have had the last touch. Jessica Graven is also back in the lineup, along with Merrill McKenna and Julia Moore, who's taken out Anna Viskovic. We'll have, looks like another substitution. Sarah Neltner will re-enter the contest. And this time she'll head in for Reagan Cannon. As we're under 20 minutes left to play, Spartans advancing on the left side. Saruhas looking outside for Shama. It's knocked out of play. The Spartans will have a throw in from a good position. Saruhas tries to go outside to Shama. McKenna defending her. And another throw in from about the same spot. Saruhas this time for Farah. And Graven gets it away. Now the Bears trying to counter on the near side. McKenna, Saruhas gets it off of her. Tries to work it forward for Shama. And the pass is going to be too long. Neltner will try to watch it go out of play. Shama with an aggressive attempt at it. And we'll see who that's out on there. Looking like they're going to call goal kick. And that's where they point at. The Spartans thought they were going to win a corner off of that. Didn't get the call in their favor. And it's cleared out by the Bears. And they've got numbers. They've got three on three. And now the fourth comes back for the Spartans. And good defense from Katie Rischel slows things down for the moment. Now Healy has to knock it out of play. all-time series, Wash U has had the better of the Spartans. They've won 26 out of 31 matchups entering today, including defeating the Spartans 19 consecutive times between 1994 and 2013. And this two-game win streak that the Spartans have had over the Bears is actually the longest all-time And three of those victories out of the five all-time the Spartans have had here at home. Bears work it inside. Foley nearly slipped through. And it looks like we're going to have an offside call against her. The Bears from 2015 to 2019 also had five straight wins against the Spartans. And despite losing in 2021, the Bears still would go on to clinch the UAA championship. We mentioned those six straight as Silva tries to get a cross in. It's a tightly contested ball and it'll win the Spartans a throw in. Silva will have it. She'll play it short to Rischel. Nearly knocked away from her. She possesses, gets it to Farah, then to Mueller. Strong defense coming back on her. Her pass stepped in front of. She was looking for Sid Schenk and just couldn't quite get it there. Now Tsaruhas going forward for Farah. Her ball too long for Shama. And out of play back for the Bears. The 
Spartans from 94 to 2019 and only defeated the Bears one time. It was back in 2014, which was here at home, and a 2-1 victory. As Shama works this one into the box. Trying to slip by a defender. This one might be called a corner kick, and it is. And maybe a good chance for the Spartans. It'll be the first corner kick that they've had all day, which is also very uncharacteristic for them. They're a team that's had 76 corners all season in their 13 games. It'll be Molly Shama to take it. She'll head this one into the center of the box and Healy was the closest one to it. Manessa sends a ball back into the box from there. Still alive, Farah nearly got to it. Now Shank and it's cleared out for the moment. Spartans get it back quickly. Manessa's outside to Silva. Defenders rushing in on her, McGahan. Silva still got it and blocks that clearance. Now Maggie Farah, McGahan recovers and is trying to get back to it. Farah's looking for some help. She's got it behind from Kitty Rischel. Rischel's gonna go in to Sid Shank. Shank still looking for some teammates. Mueller in the area. And Silva fighting for it for the Spartans, and it's going to go out of play. It might be out off of Rischel. So we're going to have a stoppage from our officials, and we'll have a substitution. Alexis Sassauer is back in for Andrea Silva. And a couple subs from Wash U as well. Galen Clayton and Kate Flynn are both back in the game as well. the throw-in will come from the far side. It's McGahan there to take it. We've got 14 minutes left in this one. It would take a lot for the Spartans to come back and score two goals here against what's tied for the nation's top defense. Again, a defense that's not allowed a goal all year. Sidney Connor has been fantastic and this back four for Wash U has been great and they've had a lot of players rotating in and out today as they have all season. This time a foul is going to be called against the Spartans. And a free kick will come for the Bears. And you'll see a couple players in the area including Jessica Graven. Casey Carl also in the area and the shot will come off. And Maggie Storty is all over this one. She'll boot it out to Shama. Coach Richter looked like she wanted another foul call there, but won't get it. Ball bouncing in the direction of Sid Shank on the outside, trying to get by McGahan. She'll stop for the moment. And nearly tripped over herself, it looked like. Popped up by that corner flag. This might be a, a throw in. And another substitution. Grace Ellert's back in the game. And she'll take Ella Coleno off. As it will be a throw in 
from that corner flag pretty much for Wash U. It goes in the direction of Sophie Viskovic. Spartans get it back to Rujas. This time down to Shama. She's going to look to cross from here. Tries to work it inside. And the defense gets her off the ball. Goldfarb, good vision as Foley was trying to intercept what she thought would be the pass back in to center to Healy. And that ball's going to get just by her. And she'll play it back to Storty. Trying to work it to Shama once again and can't get it there cleanly. A couple more subs coming back in now for both sides. Reagan Cannon is back in the game, and for the Spartans, Andrea Silva, Cece DePino back in along with Carolyn Caturez. Throw into Tarujas. Works it forward. Her ball is tipped by Viskovic. Now out of play in favor of the Spartans. They're in the attacking third. Trying to jumpstart a comeback here in the final 11 minutes. As the cross comes in, Silva was flying in and couldn't get it before Cannon did. Now it's Goldfarb. Plays it forward to Caturez. Now to Mueller. A lot of defense back. Eight white jerseys back there for Wash U. And it's going to roll out for a goal kick. So again, what's at stake here? Wash U trying to cement themselves in first place in the UAA. They lead again with 10 points right now. The Spartans sitting at second with eight. And if they were able to come back and emerge victorious over Wash U, they would take sole possession of first place. A draw and both teams would stay, depending on, of course, what happened in that Carnegie Mellon game. And a loss for the Spartans would mean a five-point lead for Wash U. Got about 11 minutes left to play in Pittsburgh, and Carnegie Mellon and Chicago remain tied scoreless. Carnegie Mellon's been on the more offensive end in that one. They have 20 shots, including nine on target, but nine saves from Chicago's goalkeeper Sophie Polarski who we saw here on Friday night when the Spartans played the Maroons to a 1-1 draw. And Chicago currently sitting at fourth in the conference as well, just behind Carnegie Mellon. Over in Atlanta, Remains a two to one game with about 23 minutes or so to play. NYU on top of Emory right now. And over in Rochester, still scoreless, about 10 minutes left. Actually, I stand corrected. Claire Grover has scored for Rochester in the 76th minute, giving them a 1 0 lead now over Brandeis. Alexis Sassauer fights for the ball for the Spartans. And they're going to say it's a free kick. Under eight minutes now to play. The Spartans will have to move quickly. Rischel trying to play it forward in the direction of Silva. It's too long. And Sidney Connor is there. Bear 
Bears trying to counter forward and the Spartans are there defensively. Now CC to Pino running back trying to get the ball and trying to get an attack back for the Spartans. Fight for it and Sassauer is taken down. That's gonna draw a foul. So CC to Pino is over the ball. It's a five-man wall for Wash U getting set for this free kick. De Pino may shoot from here. Earlier we saw Anaya Hartzler take a shot. De Pino will go for it. Connor saves it. It's still alive. Connor dives to try and stop the rebound. A lot of defense gets back. And it's knocked out of play for a Spartan throw-in. Trying to work it through, and now it's going to bounce out for a corner. Sassauer will set up for it. Just over five minutes left to play. The Spartans still trail by two. Sassauer's corner, it's a high arcing ball. Looking for Goldfarb and Healy. Now we're going to call Healy as she stuck her foot up trying to get to that ball. So the foul in the box. It's going to be a free kick for Wash U. And Sydney Connor trying to move into a tie for third most shutouts in a single season in Wash U program history. She's got 10 on the season. And is trying to get her 11th. The record is 13. That was set back in 2016 and then matched in 2018 by Emma Greenfield. And the Bears still do have a couple games left on their schedule. After this one, they'll play Greenville University on Wednesday. On the, they'll be on the road for that one. For a 7 p.m. start, and then they'll finish up their conference schedule against Rochester next Sunday, and then the following week on Saturday against the University of Chicago, and both those matches will be at home for the Bears. And then they'll wait to see, of course, hoping to host in the NCAA tournament and are likely going to cement themselves as a playoff team. Before that, a huge victory it would be for them today, taking down number six, Case Western Reserve, after the draw they had against number three, Carnegie Mellon. So the Spartans on the other side. They'll have just two matches left. They'll be on the road for both of them. They'll be at Brandeis next weekend on Saturday. And then the following week, their rivalry game against currently number three, Carnegie Mellon. They get the ball back here. Final three minutes of play. And Wash U ends that attack quickly as they have all game. The only two shots for the Spartans today coming off of two free kicks. Really has been, or felt like a dominant performance from Wash U. They've got 16 shots, nine of them on goal. And two first half goals from Sophie Viscovich and Madison Foley. And assuming the score holds, they'll defeat the Spartans here at DeSanto Field for the first time in nearly two years.
will be Wash U's first win against the Spartans since 2019. With two minutes left, Maya Healy will play it forward to Andrea Silva. And it's going to be knocked out of play by Casey Carl. The Spartans into the box with Carolyn Katoris and Ali Hackett will knock it away from there. Really a great performance by that Wash U defense. Continuing the momentum they've built up all season. This pass from Richel forward to Silva. Looks like it may have been close to the line, but it stays in. Outside to Cannon. And then a pass too long. Outside Kaleno looking for Clayton, and the ball's going to be poked out of play. And as a reminder, at the conclusion of this match, in about 30 minutes, we'll have the two men's teams facing off Spartan men against the Bears men, and it's senior day for the Spartan men's soccer team. So we'll have a quick proceeding before the game to honor the six seniors on that squad. As the final countdown begins, Wash U will come into Cleveland and leave with a 2-0 victory. Sophie Viskovich and Madison Foley with two first half goals to down the Spartans and cement themselves in first place in the UAA. They've got 13 points now, and that's five ahead of the second place Spartans. Again, Wash U will take on Greenville University in their next matchup on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. kickoff before heading home to take on Rochester. As for the Spartans, their last home match of the regular season, and they've hosted the last two years in the playoffs. They'll hope to be in that position again. But if not, it'll be a match against Brandeis and Carnegie Mellon, and they'll see what happens after that. 2-0, Wash U on top. Thank you for everyone here at Case Western Reserve University. I'm Sarazuchi. Have a great rest of your afternoon.